This is log hauler Jesse back with a load of mats. We are continuing to build our road and we're almost as far back as we want to go. We're going to start um, widening out, you know, building up our base out here. I know you've heard me say this before about how wet it is, but we it's been unseasonably warm here this December in Ohio. And about a week and a half ago, we had probably the hardest rain I've ever witnessed. Uh, we couldn't even sleep. And it rained for two days. Uh, we were flooded out again. And this area is just soaked. And even out here where it's kind of high, we got standing water. And I think we saw that as the truck was backing up the road. But uh, it's nice to be up above it. And we're coming back a little bit farther. And from here, we're going to be widening out with the mats. And this is just going to be a work area. Uh, yeah, there's going to be some gaps and some holes that's going to make walking problematic. But I think we got a plan for that either with um, like fine granule rock or we can you know, start dumping our chips in there too. Uh, nothing that the trucks can't handle, but you know, when you're walking around on these, you'd like to have a little bit more of a stable footing. I had never really noticed this now, probably since we were participating in the build with Jesse. But man, there's a lot of pressure. There's a lot of strain on this crane, you know, all the way down the arm to where the pivot is and to where it bolts onto the frame. Now that I know how these things are built, I start noticing these. Things. If you guys aren't familiar with these mats, these are uh, oak mats. They're about eight inches uh, square. Uh, 14 to 16 feet long and they have uh, four one inch bolts run through them that hold them together. These are up on Lake Erie and they have been decommissioned by a construction outfit that was laying the gas lines through Northeast Ohio. And there are tens of thousands of these up by Lake Erie in a pile and they are free to people in the know. Uh, some people have been buying these and making firewood out of them. Some people are repurposing them, like us, uh, for, for road. But uh, when Jesse works up on Lake Erie, if he's hauling logs up that way, when he comes back home, he brings a load of these with them. And uh, it works out for me because this is a heck of a lot cheaper than it is putting gravel down. But at the same time, too, uh, it's good for him. I'm paying his gas, and uh, he's still making some money on the on the side with it. And now Jesse's raising his outriggers, and he's going to come down his ladder, and then he's going to back his truck up and keep at it. It has always been in the back of my head, what am I going to do when I'm done with this road? You know, and I'm left now with all these timbers on my ground. And that is, you know, that is part of my uh, thought process here, my calculus. I don't know what I'm going to do. I think the bottom line is, though, I have to get moved back here. And this is the only way that's um, feasible for me to do it. I looked at having a road put in, and guys, this is just way too expensive. I don't see that happening. I really do think, though, that 
when the day comes, I think I could probably just hire Jesse to come take these mats away. Someone else could probably use them. I would think if I have a five-year plan, I would see where Ohio Woodburner has moved to a more industrial site, somewhere that's on a good uh, popular road, and uh, somewhere where I can leave my operation there, not worry about break-ins and uh, vandalism to all my machines, and that I move out of the house. So, you know, that's in, uh, that's in my head too. Now that place, I don't know if it exists right now, but this is the best thing I can think of. Uh, it's the, the easiest and the least expensive solution right now. So obviously these mats aren't in perfect condition, otherwise they wouldn't have been discontinued. Uh, otherwise they wouldn't be free. So there are some that are pretty beat up. Uh, there's others that are better. And that's where I'm saying, you know, like this one, you saw that there's some, uh, one of the end pieces is missing. And that's just the hole, you know, that you're getting ready for someone to step into. That's where I think we can get those filled up with wood scrap. And um, if I ever do, when we do get like a common work area, I think I would get some uh, slag brought in and, and tailgate it across it and make it, make it all smoothed out. To me guys, though, this is pretty exciting because I mean, this is gonna be the back 40, you know? And then uh, I can see the, the Yappa set up here, the Axis set up here, a conveyor feeding a central uh, location where the wood goes into the trailer. The same principles that we have at our current spot, I want to have back here, you know, and the one thing is that the firewood never touches the ground. I'm leaving nothing in piles. So we're going to have the conveyor feeding our dump trailer, which is going to act like a big wheelbarrow. And then I see both sides of the timber road being the drying yard. And I'm sure that you guys are admiring, as the way I am, Jesse's skill with the grain. I mean, it's like a third arm for him, and his skill is just outstanding. Jesse now is going to bring the back end of his truck over this way and we're going to start building these uh, mats over on this side. And this is what I see, guys, is the torque and the stress it puts on the machine. And that's where, when you remember during Jesse's build, you know, he was talking about the size of the frame on these internationals versus other trucks. And I think this is where you see the, the payoff here with, with this truck being as stout as it is. They're nice and square, though. They fit perfectly, huh? He saved some of the better ones for back here just because of that.
Log hauler Jesse, we were watching your truck and it looks like it's working pretty good. How have things been going for you? Uh, real good. Had some bugs to work out. I had an um, exhaust manifold leak and the oil pan was oozing a little bit, so oh, wow. I had to replace all that. That was last weekend's you know, little job I did over the weekend. So you take your truck to the shop and have one of your mechanics work on it. Yeah. And you can go in and relax, right? Yeah, actually, it was me and my boy out in my shop. It wasn't a <laughs> shop. <laughs> But uh, well, one night we worked till 4 in the morning and the next night till midnight. Mm -hmm. but I was at work on Monday. That is, uh, I read all the comments on our on our videos and a lot of people are talking, you know, they, they really appreciate a guy who drives a truck and also works on it. The yeah. owner operator, right? Yeah. There's nowhere to hide for you. No, if, no. if something's broke, you got to fix it, I'm right? I don't want broke it normally. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's... Well, you figure a third's your, say third's your maintenance. Well, 15% of that or more is actual labor. You know, my labor's free, so that makes it nice. Right. Not yeah. for me, but. <laughs> <laughs> we were watching from afar, and there's some stress put on yeah. the arm, the, what do you call the thing that spins, the pivot? Yeah, that's, well, they call it the head or the housing. It's all right. Kind of bearing in and then all the way down through the frame and in the outriggers. And that's where I guess this truck does live a tough lifestyle. Yeah, they do. But see, I, did, I don't really, I, I like having the loader in the back. It makes it nice because you can't smush and smash the cab accidentally. But it is the hardest on the truck, I mean, on the frame. Uh, but like I've seen some comments from people asking why I put the grapple over the cab. It's money. Uh -huh. It's money. I, I own that loader. It's all been rebuilt. The problem is it's too long for the truck to put in the front because of the emissions. So I pretty much had to, instead of spending 60 grand on a new loader and grapple, I spent way less getting this one to work on this truck. All right. And that so that explains why your loader is on the back. Yes. Right? And it seems that most of the log trucks here in Ohio are on the front. Right. And you keep calling this a Michigan style? Yeah, it's because of the cat, the, the headache rack and the cat protector where the grapple sits. Uh, Michigan, they call them Michigan trains. They'll have this many axles in a trailer with five axles. They're legal with like 168,000 pounds. So they they really like these longer booms that don't retract because they got to reach 25 feet back to load their trailer. And when you have something this long, you have truck isn't ever that long so you have to put it in a good cab. All right. So. so the other thing too that we noticed is this is that's got to take a toll on you by the end of the day going up and down that ladder. When the crane is in the front of the truck that's less climbing for you because you can come right off the step onto the ladder and go up. So here you are in the back. I mean that's got to wear you out after a while isn't it? Yeah it's more or less dragging mud in cab all the time. I mean, I'm up and down the ladder so much, I don't even pay attention. Really? But, yeah. What about the safety of it? How, you know, is there, I guess you can easily slip off of that and fall. Yeah. Is that, has that happened, or have you heard yeah. stories of it happening to others? Yeah, I broke a rib doing that. I was, the truck was leaning. I went to step off, and uh, my feet went out, and I held on, and my ribs caught me, and uh -huh. I, I finished loading. I was 140 miles from home, so I didn't have much of a choice. <laughs> I would imagine that saves you money on going to the gym, uh, a <laughs> monthly membership at the yeah. gym with your uh, with your workout. Here. Oh yeah, no, I don't have to worry about that. My wife feeds me well, and I don't gain a lot of weight. Mm -hmm. so. And then the last thing is, okay, if you are unloading logs, you can you can knock yourself off this crane yourself. You know, that's so there is that that whole safety thing to it. I mean, you got to really pay attention to what you're doing. Well, the one thing about being a log hauler, there's nothing safe about it. <laughs> I would have to say so. You just got to keep your eyes open all the time. And like the other day, I blew a hose. The, track, the boom was on the back side. It blew the hose main one on the side. I had to jump down on the logs and run to the cab to turn it off so I didn't lose all my oil. Uh -huh. So, yeah, it's you always got to have an escape plan for yeah. sure. Well, I know what you're going through because I deliver firewood. Yeah, you and, you know, I, um, I was laughing. I was talking with Jesse. I had to put front brakes on my truck, on my F-150, 
And it was at that moment I realized just how tough it is to drive a log truck. Because, I mean, I had a couple tight lug nuts, you know, yeah. that um, had, to, had to come off. So Yeah, I got uh, 14 sets of brakes and, and uh, <laughs> drums. And, yeah, a lot of, a lot of, a lot of wrenches. Yeah, wow. Jesse, you got to hit the road, right? Oh, yeah. This truck has got to make yourself some money. So thanks for uh, bringing out these mats. We're building the back 40. Yeah. And uh, I guess I'll be seeing you here in another day or two, right? Yeah. You're bringing out some more logs. Yeah, I'm bringing out some more firewood. Bring me out some long, skinny maple, all right? That's what we like here yeah. at Ohio Woodburner. All right. <laughs> all right, guys, if you're digging Log Hauler Jesse, hit that thumbs up button and uh, please subscribe to the channel. We post videos every Wednesday and Sunday. I hope everyone has a great day. A great day.